And the special thing about this marriage, and this is something that Zainab bin Tujahsh always was proud about. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala marries the Prophet ﷺ to Zainab. Zainab did not need to go through the traditional way of making marriage, going to the wali, there should be ijab and qabul, there should be an agreement. No, the whole marriage was just done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's it. Allah has married the Prophet ﷺ to Zainab. It was difficult because in that society, for a man to marry the divorcee of his adopted son was something, you know, beyond imagination. So it was difficult. Psychologically, it was difficult to overcome that obstacle. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed that verse, فَلَمَّا قَضَى زَيْدٌ مِّنْهَا وَطَرًا زَوَّجْنَاكَهَا لِكَيْ لَا يَكُونَ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ حَرَجٌ فِي أَزْوَاجِ أَدْعِيَائِهِمْ إِذَا قَضَوْا مِنْهُنَّ وَطَرًا that meant Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the contract himself. The Prophet ﷺ on the spot has become the husband of Zainab bin Tujahsh. Now Zainab used to go to, out to the wives of the, the rest of the wives of the Prophet ﷺ and say to them, you know, you were married to the Prophet through, through your fathers or through your wali, through your guardian. But I was married to the Prophet ﷺ by Allah from above seven heavens. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has married me to his Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zainab, daughter of Jahash, and her grandfather's name was, was Riab. Zainab bin to Jahash ibn Riab. She is the cousin of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Zaid ibn Harsa was Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's adopted son. And then after a while, the, the father of, Z, of Zaid ibn Harsa and uncle of Zaid ibn Harsa, paternal uncle, they came to know that their son is living as a slave in Mecca. They came to Mecca in order to take Zayd ibn Harsa back to them. Then Prophet ﷺ said, look, it is up to Zayd ibn Harsa. If he wants to go and join you people or his parents, it's, it's entirely upon him. So Zayd ibn Harsa wa was brought forth, but he, he refused to go back. Why? Because I have seen some good character from this person referring to the Prophet ﷺ. I'm not ready to give up his companionship. And Prophet ﷺ was greatly impressed by the reaction of Zaid ibn Harsa and at that moment he took him to the Kaaba and he made an announcement he said from now on Zaid ibn Harsa is my adopted son so what happened Prophet Sallallahu proposed Zaid ibn Harsa to Zainab bin Tajaj and Zainab bin Tajaj initially wasn't happy because she was from the higher tribe of the Quraysh Zainab bin Tajaj had, had choice to accept and to refuse and later on she agreed and married but the bitterness was still there, meaning she wasn't happy initially and she remained the same. And Zayd an, was the adopted son of the Prophet and so he was called Zayd ibn Muhammad. Just like in our culture, adopted children and biological children are considered the same, morally I'm saying. Islamically, in the beginning period of Islam, it was the same. Adopted children, biological children are the same. The wife of Zayd, Zainab, became the daughter-in-law of the Prophet ﷺ. And as you all know, daughter-in-laws are permanent mahram. Even if the marriage breaks between the son and the wife, the father-in-law always remains a mahram forever. Sahih al-Bukhari, Tafsir ibn Kathir. What is the story there? The Prophet ﷺ was informed by Allah that eventually Zainab would be his wife. And Zayd and Zainab began having arguments and disputes. So Zayd came to the Prophet ﷺ wanting a divorce. And the Prophet ﷺ felt awkward because he knew that when that divorce takes place and the idda is over, Zainab would become his wife. And he himself did not like the cultural taboo of marrying a supposed daughter-in-law. So he told Zayd, fear Allah and don't divorce her. He told Zayd not to divorce her. And he feared men's criticism of this cultural taboo. He was embarrassed at marrying a supposed daughter-in-law. So he wanted to stall it. Zayd wanted a divorce. This is the version of Sahih Bukhari. And the Prophet says, no, you stay with her. Don't divorce her. And Allah Azza wa Jal then revealed verses in Surah Ahzab. Why were you scared of the people? It is more befitting that you are scared of Allah.
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to the Prophet sallallahu in Surah Al-Ahzab, we have married you to her so that the believers will find no problem, will see nothing wrong in marrying the divorcees of their adopted children, of their adopted sons. Because an adopted son was just like your brother. Yes, the fact that you took care of him, the fact that you kept him in your house, the fact that you provided him with education and fatherly love and everything does not change the fact that he has real parents and real ancestry. It's a crime to confiscate someone's genealogy or ancestry from them. You cannot do that. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted to establish this ruling and put it into practice. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala married the Prophet sallallahu to Zainab. And before that verse was revealed, the Prophet sallallahu asked Zayd himself to go to Zainab and ask for her hand in marriage on behalf of the Prophet sallallahu He said, when I approached the house, she was sitting doing some stuff fixing some stuff in her house. So when I came, because the Prophet ﷺ mentioned her and mentioned that he, that Allah commanded him to marry her, he said, I couldn't even look at her. She was going to become the Prophet's wife. So his whole image of Zainab has changed. She has become so sacred. She has become like a different person than the one he was married to. So he said, I couldn't even look at her. I felt so shy looking at her. He said, I turned my back and I said to her, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wants to marry you. He mentioned your name. She replied, she said, I will not do anything. I will only go and pray to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and ask him to choose for me. Then Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala revealed that verse which we narrated. So when that verse was revealed, that meant Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala made the contract himself. The whole of Medina was very happy with this marriage. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made walima. He fed the people meat and bread. Now the Prophet ﷺ was married to Zainab bin Tujah. There was a beautiful incident that happened during that marriage because on that day, everybody came around. The Muslim was uh, packed, was jam-packed. There was no space. The Prophet ﷺ had people come into his house because there was no enough space in the masjid. He brought them to his house. He offered the food. There was food for everybody. Most of the people left. There were some people who remained in the house of the Prophet ﷺ, where Zainab herself was sitting. She gave them her back. So Zainab was sitting there waiting for them to leave. And the Prophet ﷺ was with Anas ibn Malik waiting for them to leave. But it seems they were engaged in conversation uh, and they were speaking. So they were enjoying themselves and they did not leave. So the Prophet ﷺ pretended as if he was going to leave as well. So hopefully they would understand. That was a, a polite gesture just to convey the message to them indirectly that it's time to leave. But they did not get that. So the Prophet ﷺ stood up and he walked around with Anas ibn Malik, visited his, his other wives, just checking on them. How, how is everything? Do you need anything? And he went back. These people were still sitting there. And Ummul Mu'minin Zainab bin Tujahsh was just sitting on the other corner giving them her back. She was just sitting waiting for them to leave. Still, they did not get it. It was getting more embarrassing to the Prophet ﷺ. So again, he walked around. Hopefully, these people would get it. But they could not figure out. Maybe they came from different uh, cultures, especially the Bedouins, the nomads. It was difficult for them to understand some of the cultural backgrounds of, Medina, of the people of Medina. Again, for the third time, the Prophet ﷺ goes around and comes back. At that point, they started to realize that they have, they have been too pushy, you know, to staying there without even paying attention to the fact that the Prophet ﷺ was, he has just got married, and that's his wife sitting there, unable to move. Then they left the house, and the Prophet ﷺ went into his house, and he was alone with his new wife, Zainab bin Tujahsh. Now, prior to that incident, around that time, Umar ibn Khattab, out of respect to the Prophet ﷺ, he always said to the Messenger ﷺ, I wish that your wives are completely blocked from the rest of the Muslims. He said, because, yes, righteous people come to your house and speak to you, and your wives are around. Obviously, they're covered apart from their faces. I wish that you cover your wives fully, because some righteous people come visit you, but sometimes some bad people come. The hypocrites, some non-Muslims come, so I wish that your wives are covered. So that was a wish that Umar al-Khattab always expressed to the Prophet ﷺ, out of respect, out of care for the household of the Prophet 
So when the Prophet ﷺ married Zainab, and he went, when he went into his house with her by themselves, Anas ibn Malik narrates this story. He says the Prophet ﷺ came out and he conveyed some verses that were just revealed to him. It was the ayah of the hijab that the wives of the Prophet ﷺ should be covered fully. And if people were to speak to them, they should speak to them from behind a wall or from behind the door. And this is the time when the, the hijab was made obligatory on the wives of the Prophet ﷺ that they had to cover the whole of their bodies.